It wasn't too long ago that Resident Evil was in the worst place it's ever been, having lost sense of what made fans fall in love with it in the first place and releasing one disappointing game after another. Over the last couple of years, however, things have started looking up, with the excellent Resident Evil 7 and the spectacular Resident Evil 2. With the upcoming Resident Evil 3, it only looks like the series' momentum is going to continue. It's clear that Resident Evil has had a lot of ups and downs, and looking back at its history and charting its successes and missteps is, as such, a very interesting activity. And in this feature, that's exactly what we're going to do, as we list all Resident Evil games from what we feel were the worst to the ones we felt were the best. With all that said, let's get started. Number 22, Umbrella Core. Umbrella Core is the most aggressively un-Resident Evil game this series has ever had to suffer. But not only is it guilty of slapping the Resident Evil name on an unimaginative cash grab competitive shooter, it's also guilty of just being a bad game, period. The map design is boring, the zombies are an afterthought, the single player might as well not exist. It's a game that's best left forgotten, and thankfully very soon it probably will be. Number 21, Resident Evil Gaiden. Some consider Resident Evil Gaiden non-canon, while most don't even remember or know that it exists, and it's easy to see why. Resident Evil Gaiden was the result of Capcom's inexplicable insistence on having a weird Resident Evil offshoot on the Game Boy Color. It was played from a top-down perspective with a weird first-person shooting minigame that it tried to pass off as combat. It got boring really quick. The only saving grace was the story, which surprisingly could at least hold your attention for a while. Number 20, Resident Evil Survivor and Survivor 2 Code Veronica. The Resident Evil Survivor games were Capcom's first attempts at expanding the series into new territories. After firmly establishing the franchise as an industry giant with the first three games, the first Survivor title was an attempt to deliver something quicker and more action-oriented with a light gun on-rail shooter experience. The result, in both Survivor games, were underwhelming, with bland action and not much to make the games feel like proper Resident Evil titles. Capcom would go on to make some decent on-rails Resident Evil games eventually, but their first cracks at it were pretty underwhelming. Number 19, Resident Evil Dead Aim. Yeah, it's gonna be a while before we get to the good stuff. To its credit, Resident Evil Dead Aim was a better game than the previous two light gun RE titles were, and it struck a much better balance between slower sections and on-rails action than the Survivor games did, while its mix of first-person and third-person sections was pretty cool. That said, these were all still occasional highlights in an overall sloppy experience. Number 18, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. RE Operation Raccoon City was caught right in the middle of the firestorm that culminated in Resident Evil 6's massive backlash and a forced hiatus for the series. To its credit, Operation Raccoon City had some interesting ideas, pitting two squads of six elite soldiers each, both fighting against each other and the zombies that are tearing the city apart to make it out alive. However, the idea was executed poorly, to say the least, with clunky combat, no scares, and very little thrills. There was also a single player mode, but that was even more forgettable. Number 17, Resident Evil Outbreak and Outbreak File Number 2. Resident Evil has often toyed with the idea of multiplayer, and it's almost always missed the mark, to varying degrees. Resident Evil Outbreak and Outbreak File Number 2 are definitely two of the series' more successful cracks at multiplayer, and while they're both passingly enjoyable, they're pretty forgettable games all in all. They have weak stories, the playable scenarios are often too short and thus forgettable, and it all starts to become a bit repetitive pretty quickly. Number 16, Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D. On paper, Resident Evil The Mercenaries is a pretty solid game, and is especially good for arcadey replayable enjoyment. Its time attack zombie slaying action can be a lot of fun, and the game looks and plays surprisingly well, especially considering it's a 3DS title. What hurts the game, however, is its lack of content. As fun as it is, there's only so much of the Mercenaries mode that you can play before getting bored of it. Number 15, Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles is far from a regular Resident Evil game, but it is, oddly enough, a really fun one. Built keeping the Wii's unique motion controls in mind, Umbrella Chronicles turns Resident Evil into an on-rails shooter, while several unlockables also make the game surprisingly replayable. 
This isn't a classic RE game by any means, and it doesn't have a ton of depth, but it's still a good, fun rail shooter. Number 14. Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles Dark Side Chronicles did what every sequel needs to do. It took the ideas of its predecessor, The Umbrella Chronicles, and it refined them even further. What we got was an even more enjoyable and satisfying on-rail shooter, which adapted material from older Resident Evil titles in some genuinely good ways. Number 13. Resident Evil 6 Though not outright the worst, Resident Evil 6 is certainly the most infamous Resident Evil game ever. This was when Capcom went, screw it, and completely forgot that Resident Evil was once about horror. No, with Resident Evil 6, they went for the games with most explosions per minute record. Add to that an asinine story, and you have a recipe for disaster. Of all the mainline Resident Evil games, RE6 is definitely the worst. Number 12. Resident Evil Zero this right here was the last fixed camera Resident Evil game we ever played, and most series fans would agree that though it was a decent game, it probably wasn't the best representation of that era of Resident Evil. That's not because it was bad, Resident Evil Zero was actually a very well-made Resident Evil game, with good atmosphere, visuals, music, and a fairly decent story. What let the game down was the fact that when it came out, audiences had grown more than just a little tired of fixed camera RE games while some of the game's experiments were less successful than others. For instance, while the character switching mechanic made for some great puzzles and exploration, the new inventory system was at best annoying. Number 11, Resident Evil 5. For many, Resident Evil 5 is the epitome of some of the series' worst tendencies, and it's true that it's one of two games that represent the series at its explosion-y worst. And while Resident Evil 5 is certainly far from a traditional RE experience, you've got to admit that it was also a pretty solid action game. It's not horror anymore, no, but the game still delivers tense encounters in spades, while it also makes use of the RE lore in its story in some mostly excellent ways. There's also the fact that RE5 is also a great co-op experience. It may not be what one typically wants to see in Resident Evil, but it's still pretty damn fun. Number 10. Resident Evil Code Veronica Code Veronica, often considered to be the true Resident Evil 3, was one of the last times we played Resident Evil with fixed cameras, so in many ways, this is the series' most polished and expanded vision of that era of games. That tight design and style of gameplay the series was known for in its earlier days was back in full effect in Code Veronica. When it came to the story though, Code Veronica was a lot more experimental, moving away from the relatively grounded horror focused on Raccoon City in the first three games and giving players something more gothic and outlandish. The results were mixed, with many regarding the story to be a bit too over the top and campy, while a couple of characters introduced in Code Veronica are often regarded as some of the worst ever seen in a mainline RE game. That said, back in the day, seeing Chris and Claire Redfield in a game together with Albert Wesker once again returning as the bad guy was a fantastic experience. Number 9. Resident Evil 1996 The one that started it all. Resident Evil is a game that Capcom and the survival horror genre as a whole have built their identities on. With its tight level design, palpable atmosphere, slow combat, and campy story, Resident Evil was a phenomenon when it first came out. Over time, as is the case with many games of the PS1 era, Resident Evil has started to show its age. While it also needs to be said that the 2002 remake makes the original pretty much obsolete, and more on this in a bit. Even so, the first Resident Evil's legacy is undeniable. Number 8. Resident Evil Revelations 2 Resident Evil Revelations 2 was a welcome dose of horror in a post-RE6 landscape, and it was a nice reminder in the dark times of how good the series could be when it stuck to what it was good at. Revelations 2 wasn't groundbreaking by any means, but it was more concerned with scaring its audiences than it was with wowing them with explosions, while its often ridiculous story was also constantly engaging. It wasn't perfect, no, it wasn't as atmospheric as the first Revelations was, for instance, but it was still a solid RE game. Number 7. Resident Evil Revelations Even during the years when RE5 and 6 were dictating the series' constant shift away from horror, it was still delivering some typical horror games every now and then. The highlight of those games was RE Revelations, which actually first launched on the 3DS. 
For hardcore series fans who were dissatisfied with the direction Resident Evil 5 had taken, Revelations felt like a welcome homecoming. A creepy setting, palpable atmosphere, genuine scares, excellent sound design, and a much more gradual pace. There were some hiccups here and there, sure, such as the disappointing side missions and a few annoying side characters, but by and large, RE Revelations was an excellent traditional experience. Number 6. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis Of the original Resident Evil trilogy to release on the PS1, RE3 Nemesis gets overlooked the most often, but make no mistake about it, this is one of the series' very best games. It was a further refinement of Resident Evil 2, which was already a huge improvement over its predecessor, and it managed to introduce more action elements into the story and gameplay without forgetting that it was still a survival horror title. From one of the most iconic Resident Evil monsters to date with the menacing Nemesis, to the expansion of the story to show us the effect of the T-Virus outbreak on Raccoon City on a much larger scale, Resident Evil 3 was exactly the kind of sequel it needed to be. Number 5. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard Resident Evil was in dire straits after RE6, which, in spite of being one of Capcom's highest-selling games ever, had forced them to put the series on hold, or risk killing it forever. Resident Evil 7 was very much a return to the roots kind of deal for the series, a soft reboot that stripped away all of the fat the series had picked up over the years, took its bare essence, and delivered it in a modern yet classic survival horror experience. And boy, is that exactly what it did. From the first-person perspective, to taking players back into a single mansion as a setting, from the incredibly written and developed Baker family, to the palpable horror and grounded tone of the setting, RE7 was a perfect course correction for the series in nearly every way possible. Number 4. Resident Evil 2 1998 A landmark release for Resident Evil, for Capcom, and for the survival horror genre as a whole. The first Resident Evil showed that Capcom were capable of delivering an excellently designed and tense horror experience. But with RE2, they showed that they have an even deeper understanding of what makes horror tick, and that they can pull it off on an even bigger scale. Trying to make it out of Raccoon City as it crumbles around you, traversing environments throughout the city and trying to survive the onslaught of the dead, experiencing the story through the perspectives of the excellent pair Leon and Claire, all while their campaigns impacted each other and crossed over with each other in unpredictable ways. Resident Evil 2 took the formula established by its predecessor and perfected it to a T. Number 3. Resident Evil 4 Resident Evil 4 was when Capcom's survival horror franchise stopped being an industry giant and became an industry legend. It's said that the best franchises are those that can grow and change with the times, without losing their identity. And with Resident Evil 4, this series did so in spectacular fashion. In retrospect, it marked the beginning of the shift towards a more action-oriented tone for the franchise, but RE4 in particular struck a perfect balance, delivering action and scares in equal measure. It felt new, exciting, fresh, and revolutionary, and yet, it still felt like Resident Evil. Number 2. Resident Evil 2002 In hindsight, it seems a little strange that Resident Evil was only six years old when Capcom decided to remake it from the ground up. Hell, it seemed strange even then. But as anyone who's played the 2002 remake would tell you, it was a hell of a decision. That's because the 2002 release renders the 1996 PS1 original completely obsolete, whether that's in terms of the changes and improvements it makes to the original, or the beefy chunk of completely new content that it adds. For Resident Evil purists who still believe the series' fixed camera era was its peak, there's no beating Resident Evil 2002. Number 1. Resident Evil 2 2019 Resident Evil 2 is the best of all worlds for series fans. It keeps the design and progression of the original RE2 intact, it imbues that with the tone and atmosphere of RE7, and it does it all with an over-the-shoulder perspective similar to RE4 and all of the games that followed it. And it does it all with near perfection. Resident Evil 2 is bursting with polish, every inch of the experience crafted with the utmost care and craftsmanship. From the way it modernizes the original, to smart new additions and changes it introduces of its own, Resident Evil 2 confidently displays a perfect understanding of what makes for a perfect survival horror experience.
And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.